Hey, this is Tom at Talent Guitar Works, and today, what if I told you you could control the tone of your guitar by just making adjustments? A lot of you would look at me and go, what? You mean the tone knobs, right? No, no, not at all. Um, the way an electric guitar works is the vibration of the strings over the magnetic pole pieces that are wrapped with the copper wire produce an electric signal that is transferred through a shielded cable into a guitar amplifier that is then processed to become the sound of the guitar that you play. And, and, and we're talking about electrics. I'm not talking about acoustic electrics or anything else today. That's all we're going to talk about is the electric guitar and how, you know, amongst the fingers and the wood and the type of the pickups and the type of the strings and how you play, what affects your tone. Well, what really affects your tone is the pickup height. This is one of the biggest things. And it's also got to do with your string action height. These two things go hand in hand. And whenever I have a customer come into the shop and they want me to do a setup, the first thing I do is I ask what kind of music they play. Because if they tell me bluegrass, a little bell goes off and I go, bluegrass, and I know that's, we're talking acoustic guitars now, they like a higher action. Um, if they tell me they like to play slide guitar, they're telling me they like a slightly higher action. Now, most guitars come with factory settings for action. And these are neither high nor low. They're kind of a happy medium. And each factory decides what it is. You know, some say 464 is at the high E and five or 664 is at the low E. And that's what the action is for a normal action on the guitar. Now you also have to couple into that the, the string height and uh, or the neck bow or relief. And lately, and we'll say this is our guitar neck, and people are sitting there saying, well, you have to have the neck as flat as you can get it and that's going to give you um, the best playability on the guitar. Well, what happens is if that neck gets just a little too flat and it goes the other way, you see what's going on right here, right? I'm bending this. I'm going, okay, all right, I'm going to straighten the neck, straighten the neck, straighten the neck. Now I've done a back bow to the neck. And what you're really looking for is for the neck to have a little relief. But even if I put the relief on the neck, you'll notice that the curvature is consistent and it comes back up at this end. Now, if you're going to try and flatten your neck, get one of these. Put it on the fretboard to your scale length. If you see it dropping away at the first three frets, you've created a back bow in your guitar neck, and that's going to cause string bugs. Now, by properly adjusting your, your truss rod is going to be your first step, and this prevents you from chasing your problems all over the neck of the guitar, which happens a lot, but we're getting a little off track, so I'm going to reel back in. I said, People that like higher actions, they, they want more sustain out of their guitar strings. They generally don't play a lot of bar chords, especially way up the neck, you know, 12th fret and stuff like that. And they're not playing a lot of leads, 12th fret and stuff. Okay, I get it. You can live with a higher action. It's not going to hurt your fingers to press those strings down. Now, going to the other side of the coin with the lower action guys. All right. So you're gonna get a lot more rattle, string rattle and buzz. You're also gonna get what's known as a warble. And if you depress your low E string at the 15th fret and pick your low E string, if you hear a warbly noise from your pickup, it means that it's having a magnetic pull on the string that's preventing it from vibrating correctly through the magnetic field to produce the sound you want. This could say, hey, it's time to lower that neck pickup or the middle pickup or the bridge pickup, whichever one it is, a little bit on that bass side. So having said that, um, if you drop the strings down too low, a lot of guys say it's harder to bend the strings 
if they're too low to the fretboard, that they're they're getting in the way of other strings or, you know, it depends on how they play. So this is one of the important things. And the reason I'm doing this whole video is I had a conversation with a good friend of mine, Matt from Texas Toast, about pluck machines. And the problem with pluck machines is you have to tell the operator exactly what it is you are looking for. You can't just ship your guitar off to a pluck and go, I want my action lower, or I want my guitar to play perfectly. I'm not a mind reader, Bubba. I can't do it. I have customers that are professional musicians that sit here in the shop, and after I'm done with their setup, we go back and forth, me handing them the guitar, them playing it, saying a little bit higher, and I make the adjustments and hand it back, and I go, yep, that one's good. Oh, this one's a little bit higher. And this goes on because they have to take into consideration that I don't know what they feel and what they hear when they play their guitar. Only they do. So you have to be able to communicate clearly to a pluck operator or your tech if you're getting a setup what it is you desire to be able to do with that guitar. Because like I said, if one man, if I set his strings real low and he goes, I love tapping, I'm an Eddie Van Halen dude. If I set his strings too high, he's looking at me like, what'd you do? Why is this so bad? Once again, not a mind reader. So things that happen, if you drop your pickup height too much, and Stumac makes, and I'm not shilling for Stumac, Stumac makes a pickup height tool uh, that you could put on either flat or staggered pull piece pickups and determine the baseline height of your pickups. Because after that, it's you and that little Phillips head screwdriver and your ear and amplifier that's gonna dial it in and give you the correct tone. How many times have you heard a person go into a guitar center or something and say, I played four different Stratocasters and they all sounded different, but they all had the same pickups. I would almost bet it's got to do with the height adjustment of the pickups, the height adjustment of the strings. Uh, it could be the maple to, to um, rosewood fretboard. That could be it. However, it's probably the height adjustment of the pickups. Remember, when they're assembling these things, they're doing them close. They're not 100% dead on. I watched a video the other day of a guy talking about he couldn't identify a Fender Stratocaster guitar based on the serial numbers being different on the neck and the body. And it turns out it was it was one of the conglomeration guitars that came after, out from Fender later on where they had leftover bodies from one run and leftover necks from another run. And yes, they all fit together and they put together a wonderful guitar, but it didn't meet the specs of each type of Fender that he was looking at on both serial numbers, but it was a combination. Was it still a great strat? Yeah, it was. Let it go, right? So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is um, on this height adjustment, and people are gonna argue, so stop yelling right now, stop typing about, well, your amplifier can adjust your tone. Yeah, and a bazillion pedals worth a million dollars can do it, along with Kempers and Helixes and Axe FX and everything else you could think of. It can all do it. But initially, guys started out getting great tone just by having the guitar and the amplifier. There were no pedals in between. Jimi Hendrix started with the pedal thing and Eric Clapton, right? And uh, you have to go backwards and think about that. So if your pickup is set too low, your amplifier signal that it receives will be thin tinny sounding, it won't have great tone. As you come up with your bass side of your pickup and your treble side, you should get a warmer, more resonant tone. Now, you need to stop when the sustain changes for you or whatever, and you need to experiment with this over several sessions of playing your guitar and just making minor adjustments to the pickup and taking notes. By doing this, you may find that there's a guitar on your shelf or on your rack that's been there for years that you don't like to play just because nobody ever set the pickups to the correct height to give you the tone that you wanted. Or they, they did the string height to where you wanted and you didn't get it set up correctly. But 
if you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of your gear, your specific guitar, you have to delve this far into it. You really have to measure all this. Now they're talking about, uh, even with the string Mac tool, they're talking about 3 sixteenths of an inch on the low E side from the, the bottom of the string to the top of the pole piece of the pickup for a single coil or the top of a humbucker or the top of a rail, whatever type pickup you have on there. But if you do change pickups, also keep in mind that you want to talk to somebody at the manufacturer and say, what do you recommend for height? They should be able to tell you. If you remember, I did a video not long ago of only half my D's are any good, you have to decide which half, where I was gonna put a tone zone and an Aaron Norton in this Fender Telecaster. And man, because they were like 15.3K ohms resistance each, they were just way too much for that guitar. Well, yes, I did back the pickups down as low as I could get those pickups for that guitar body, for the way it was routed and everything. And I still wasn't happy with the sound and I put the vintage 12s in from uh, Ken Armstrong. And I really liked that sound without having to do anything else. So I left it at that and that's the way the guitar sold. So um, it's something to consider. But if you're gonna use active pickups or if you're gonna use passive pickups, how that's gonna affect the height on there. And remember, if it's impacting the wobble of the string or the string's vibration across that electromagnetic field, then it's going to affect your tone. So make those minor adjustments, get your pickup styled in, get your um, action height to where you want it. And, you know, there's the ongoing battle of, do I use these to get my action? Or do I use this to get my action? Whoops, do I use this? You know, that's up to you and up to your tech or your luthier that's doing it. I, I use both. You know, I use these at the nut, and I use this at the 12th and for bases at the 17th. And I do um, blueprint some of my customers' guitars. Now, when I blueprint a customer's guitar, I make sure that that's not his slide guitar or that's not his specific drop tuning guitar for the one song he plays with his band. And a lot of times this is what happens with professional musicians is they'll have guitars picked out for certain songs for certain reasons. And they know that they're gonna be playable for that song only and not necessarily a wide range of songs. Some of the guitars they have, yeah, they'll, they'll play four or five songs on and then switch them out to something similar. But on a lot of these uh, reviews, you'll see with the guitar techs for the traveling and touring artists, you'll say, oh, well, on this song, he plays this guitar. And the reason why is X, Y, and Z. And it's very simply searching for a certain sound, a certain tone out of that guitar. So other Guitar players, like I said, bass players, my friend Andre Baca, I blueprinted his basses, all of his basses, all the stuff is written down on um, where it's gotta be at the first fret, where it's gotta be at the 17th fret, you know, as far as what his action is, the intonation and everything that's, that's set up. And if I grab one of his, I could flip to that page and go, here it is. And he's also got a copy of that that he could just take to somebody else should I not be around or if he moves or one of us moves or something like that and goes, this is the way I want this bass set up. Now, bass players generally aren't playing slides, so you're, you're a little safe there, but you get what I'm talking about when I say, I use this guitar for this only, and I use that guitar for that only, or I'm playing bluegrass on this, or I'm doing that. So look at all this stuff. The information's out there. People have told you this over the years before, and because we always look for the shortcut, it's easy for us to buy the pedal or to have somebody else make an adjustment based on what they think and we'll just live with it instead of us becoming the informed party and actually dialing in what we own and making those micro adjustments. Because it's not like you bought a car from the car dealer and he set it up for you. You're buying this guitar and it comes at the baseline stuff and they don't know how you want to play it. So they're leaving room for you to go either way. 
and that decision is up to you and that's the one you have to make or you and your tech have to make. And like I said, when you communicate to them, do not use the, the I won't mention the, the company, but a warm woody sound at the first three frets followed by a face melting below the 12th fret. Don't use shit like that. Tell them how high you want it. Tell them you want it, you know, how much sustain you want how much clarity you want. If your guitar is playing distorted right out of the box, that pickup's too high. So there you go. And this is Tom at Talon Guitar Works. Remember, only half my ideas are any good. You have to decide which half. Uh, I'm gonna try and maintain composure as I go to closing on my new house this Thursday. Wish me luck. And then um, all hell breaks loose as we start building the new shop. So take care, have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.